Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Denise and I live in a cabin by the lake and I get a lot of different wildlife that comes right up onto my deck and it's nice to see these critters but sometimes they can be a little disconcerting as well. In the opening shot you saw uh, what I believe is a mink and it's been coming around quite often. Um, it makes me a little nervous because I'm thinking that it would be a danger to my cat if my cat was outside. So I try and keep an eye on things. Uh, but as you can see, this mink was after my bird feeder. So thank goodness it's just going after that. Um, for now and then I try to scare it away so you see me tapping on the window and it's not scared of me as you can see he just kind of looked at me and then went back to doing what it was doing so at that another reason uh, that makes me a little nervous as well because I have scared it away a number of times and then it just sort of turns tail and comes back and just looks at me so defiantly and I don't know if you noticed its uh, teeth in in the video. There's sort of a sort of a quick flash of its teeth, and uh, I've seen the damage that it has done. And I would not want that thing to bite me or my cat. It has razor sharp teeth. No fooling. So yeah, my little mink. And I love animals, and so there's no way I would have that little creature destroyed in any way. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I do, however, have live traps and I will probably have to lure it into a humane live trap and then take it away somewhere far and release it back into a different wilderness. <laughs> that's far from my wilderness. <laughs> anyway, that's that's what that clip is all about. There's another, um, I have other videos in my playlist where I do show um, the animals that come around. There's a, a few videos back. I had a black bear that uh, came and sat down on my, <laughs> on my deck. I guess it was feeling pretty comfortable and confident. Uh, honestly, it was easier to scare away the bear than it is to scare away this mink critter. And so, Anyway, just wanted to share a little bit of my uh, life out here by the lake. And um, yeah, so let's get to it. This video is about my completed pages uh, for November 2023. And uh, the first one I want to show you is in this coloring book called The Art of War by, uh, or not, by Pete Cates is the illustrator. Uh, but the art of war as based on the ancient wisdom of uh, Sun Tzu, uh, same title, the art of war. Now, um, I completed the page, actually in my last completed pages video, this was a work in progress. So I'm happy to show you now that I have completed it. And I I do like the way that it turned out. I wanted it to be really vibrant and full of beautiful colors that depicted the um, ancient Chinese um, way of life, I guess, because that's what this book is about. And so I wanted the, the, their wardrobe to look like, um, you know, like shiny fabric, the way that a brocade or or maybe a silk and um, maybe with gold inlay. I don't know <laughs> if that's what their fabrics were, but that's what they certainly look like. Anyway, um, as you can see in the page here, I used um, a little bit of a glitter gel pen for the accessories in the lady's hair. Um, I'm getting better with coloring skin tones so I really like the way all of the different faces have turned out and what else can I tell you I used Prismacolor Premier color pencils and again the glitter gel 
Oh, and I also use the gold signal pen in certain areas, like the accents in the gold, or sorry, the green garment that this fellow is wearing. The fellow with the, the blue robes, I also use the gold. I think you can see it as I rotate the page, the shine, you can see the gold. So I used it to accent the certain parts of their fabric and same with the ladies here as well. Um, I think that's all that I can say about this. I'm just happy to have completed it. I enjoy this coloring book very, very much. The illustrations are fabulous and uh, there's a lot of men in this uh, coloring book, which, you know, for most of us, that doesn't sound weird when I say that, right? Because so many coloring books has, you know, either animals or cute things and definitely lots of girls and women illustrated. So finding really nicely illustrated men in a coloring book is just, it's nice to find. And this book has a lot of that if you're, you know, interested in looking for something like that. I also have another video with a full flip through of this coloring book. So if you're interested in seeing what this book has page by page, please go back and you'll find that flip through in my videos from the past. In that video, I had also talked about um, the other inspiration for getting this coloring book was I came across uh, the the graphic novel written, of course, by Pete Cates. So he created the graphic novel and this book is absolutely beautiful. So it tells the story, you know, using this kind of storyline, explaining Sun Tzu's wisdom, but in a more practical way of life. And yeah, so I, I really love the book. It is bound with a, a bit of uh, thread through the, the book binding. The novel is beautiful. And I wanted to buy a copy for myself. And I'm going to give one to each of my sons uh, for Christmas. So I was just about to wrap these and put them away until they come out to see me at Christmas time. But I thought I would just show that to you before I wrap them up. But again, I'm going to leave one here for myself because I like it as a reference point if I'm a little bit maybe stuck on a color palette for one of the pictures that I want to color in here. I thought maybe the graphic novel would be a nice way to refer back and get some ideas on, on a color palette for a picture. So far, I am not haven't run into any problems. I love choosing my own color palettes, but I, I like to draw inspiration from other places as well. So that is that book. The next page that I completed for November is in this book, Tiny Worlds, by Matt Edwards. And I chose a page in here to do as a buddy color with a fellow colorist and YouTube artist. Uh, her name is Jody at J.I. Colorist. Or sorry, yes, J.I. Colorist. <laughs> sorry, Jody. <laughs> um, it's good for me to repeat it. That way people will go and, and check out your channel if they're not already familiar with you. But you're pretty popular, so I have a feeling most of my viewers know all about you, Jody. So um, it's it's awesome to uh, showcase her work. And so the page that um, that we did is this one called Fisherman in a Bottle. And she was very gracious. I got to chose the picture, so I was the one that chose it. And she said, oh yes, let's do that one. Uh, we were going to try and complete it for October, um, but it realistically, it ended up being November that um, she and I have completed this page. So um, uh, hopefully my editing skills, they're, they're pretty amateur, but I'm just 
sort of framing this picture right here and then when it comes time I will edit and show and put her page right here and then in the meantime I will show you what I did with this page so fisherman in a bottle I just thought this page was so cute and um, I know I might say the obvious things but let me just explain it so it's a uh, part of a bottle with a cork in it and so inside is a fisherman and his little house and so I wanted to keep the background and the lake in the background sort of separate in a sense so I colored inside the, the bottle so inside the water here, I kind of went from dark to light and then dark across for the top of the water. And then in the background where we see, still see the lake in the background, I went sort of dark blue and then faded it out to light. That way it, you sort of see the contrast between the two different bodies of water. So I hope that makes sense. Um, I used um derwent intense pencils just in a few places um no only in one place and that was the cork i used intense for the background of the cork because i knew i wanted it to have this sort of um you know water colored look to it and then i came over top with a dark prismacolor pencil and filled in the dark spaces like the way a cork would look. Um, I used just a little bit of glitter gel pen for the little bubbles in the water. And, oh, uh, yes, I did use that same color of the, the ink tents. It was called mustard for the intense pencil I used, I think, I think it was called mustard. And then I did the same for the sand. So really the cork and the sand is the same color. It's the same color palette. For the glass, I wanted the bottle to kind of look like glass. So I used, let me just grab it here. I would say it's glossy accents, but it's not that exact product, but something very similar to it. This is the Spectrum Noir, Spectrum Noir Glossy Highlights. So it does the same thing as glossy highlights, uh, glossy, glossy accents, if you have that product. And so I colored the glass, any part of the glass with a super light blue, color from the Prismacolor color pencils. And then I went over it with the glossy, sorry, let me make, make sure I'm saying the right thing. Yes, glossy highlights. And I just went over the whole outline of the jar. And I even put a bit across here that is for the idea of the shoulder of the bottle as we're looking through it. I don't know that you can really see that, but I'm going to rotate the page and I'm hoping that it kind of has that sort of glass bottle look. And again, I hope that um, I did, that I showed Jody's picture here um, by, um, in, in the same frame and yeah, thank you, Jody, for doing this buddy color with me. Your picture is awesome, which I knew it would be. And yeah, thank you again. So with um, coloring books and the coloring pages, which I love to do, I also love to do color by number. I, I find it very relaxing and I have several different uh, color by number um, books and but the latest one that's new to me is the the one that is by George Tufexis and he has lots of these color by number books and with Christmas coming up I love any excuse to color Christmas so I uh, decided to try 
the George Two Fixes color by number. And I really like it. Um, is it as relaxing as some of the other easier color by number books? No, this one is a little bit more intense, but I like it because of that. So when I'm in the mood for something a little more intense, uh, I, I reach for this book. So the color palette is, in this one anyway, is on the side and then the uh, sample page of what how it should look completed is there um, on the inside cover and on the back and so the things that I like about this coloring this color by number is that the the lines are have more of a gray look and the numbers are really small Sometimes I have to get a magnifying glass to see it, but that's okay. And the reason I like that is because when you're finished the picture, the numbers don't generally show through your colors. So I like that about George Tufex's coloring book. Um, I mean, I'm gonna bring it up real close so you can see it looks like a regular coloring page. And you can't see any of the numbers, even with the light yellow, it just sort of covers it up, mostly. I mean, if I really, you know, brought it up close, you'll be able to see a hint of a number, you know, there. But um, otherwise, these books are really lovely when you can, when you complete them. And then I like to embellish with a bit of metallic paint or glitter gel pens. So that's why I'm ro rotating this page so that hopefully you can see that there are places where I shined it up a little bit and added some glitter. So I've been spending quite a bit of time <laughs> completing some pages in this book. And uh, I mean, look at this. I mean, that's for a color by number page. Like that is an astounding picture, and I, I'm not <laughs> not tooting my own horn. I'm 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 giving kudos to George Tufexis for his illustration, but that how fun it was for me to color this, and again I used a bit of metallic paint in certain areas to highlight some of the things in this illustration. But oh, I just really enjoy these illustrations they're really beautiful and so that's why i didn't complete that many pages in my regular coloring books i've been kind of spending a little bit <laughs> too much time in this color by number so i've completed more i just i don't think i need to show you all of them i mean if if that is something you do want to see in another video by all means you just put a comment down below and i'd be happy to show you more of the completed pages in here or maybe you want a complete flip through of this book however i'm i'm sure there already are a few flip through videos of this book already so but again for my viewers you just let me know what you want i'm happy to accommodate as best as i can The next thing I wanted to show you, uh, which is not about coloring so much as drawing and sketching, are um, these books I recently purchased. One is called The Art of Spiral Drawing, and this is by Jonathan Stephen Harris. And the other one by the same is The Art of Drawing Optical Illusions. So I really wanted these books to practice a little bit more illustrations in my own sketchbooks and, and so on. And this is a sketchbook that I've had for quite some time. I like hardcover sketchbooks because then I get to paint my artwork on it. I haven't done the back page yet, but I probably will paint something on there. Um, but in the meantime, this is a mandala that I that I like to do with dot painting 
uh, but inside is not so much the dot painting, but the sketching and the practice that I like to, to do. So this is something that I have sort of played around with in the past. Um, I was trying to find a different sort of Zen, I guess you could call them doodling or Zen tangling. It's sort of the same idea, but that has that, um, you know, optical illusion look to it so that's why when I came across this book I thought oh this might give me a lot more ideas and examples that I can practice with and so I'll just flip through to kind of show you but there it is a step by step some of these are are quite simple I've already played with but things like this I really like you know where it looks like a staircase right and it it looks like you're actually could go down that staircase and it's just a drawing on a flat sheet of paper so i love that idea and i want, want to practice uh, more with that idea but you know i guess i'm, I'm kind of there but again sometimes i get a little stumped and i need some ideas so I thought I would show you just a few pages in my sketchbook. I'm almost finished it too. I think there's only like a couple of pages left. So this was another sketch that I did practicing with the idea of it being three dimensional. And then also the idea of spiral drawing. So that's why I bought Jonathan Harris's other book, the one called The Art of Spiral spiral drawing to get again some more ideas and things that I can practice with so I really enjoy let me just take this off okay that one's really sticky I think I was grabbing two sticky notes at once um this is real like the black ink that I use for this is the uh, micron pens the fine liners they work really well when you're creating this kind of sketching and artwork. So there's that one. Another I like to do is sort of a, a collage of different types of drawings. I like to draw keyboards and I love doing checkerboards, but again, and the spiraling, I like to do that as well. So that that's a lot of fun and very relaxing for me to do so another page oh this one this was um again um this was a couple of years ago i've been working on the sketchbook for a while okay so that isn't what i'm showing you isn't new um these books i did get recently so moving forward any new sketches that i make you know i'll, I'll show you that but from the past I want to show you this one because i'm kind of proud of this one I went on a trip to Jasper with my son in 2020 and one of the places we passed by was called Medicine Lake and I said stop the car <laughs> and so I had to get out and because the mountain range to me looked like the snow looked like it was in a checkerboard pattern and I thought oh what a what a cool photo to reference and create um, a sketch from it so using the same idea the lines and the mountain range and then I doodled what I thought right like the uh, the idea of the checkerboard and then with the rest of the, the the landscape you know just the idea of the little trees and then the doodly swirls and so on to complete the rest of the picture and i mean i've got lots more in in my book but i'm not going to show you everything because that would make this video way too long and i'm not sure that you're interested in seeing all of that but um just to show you i do only have like four pages left and then i'll have completed this this whole sketchbook which really that'll be the first time in my life that i i'll have completed a whole sketchbook full of items that you know i'm proud to show or or not show like there's a lot of things in here that are not great 
but that's what a sketchbook is all about. So I want to thank you for being with me today and letting me show you what I've been doing for the you know month of November and I hope to see you again. Bye for now.